Hey, what's up? Like, totally time for 90210. Well, happy new year, everybody. It is 1997. It is. Well, my name is Mark. <laughs> With me, as always, is my girlfriend, Carol. How are you doing, Carol? Hey, what's up? Not much. It's been a good week here. A it's couple a good weeks year. here. Here It is January 10th, 1997. Yep. And we're here with the 90210 show. I would like to officially title this episode, I Hate Brandon Walsh. Oh, yeah. Brandon Walsh, big piece of shit in this episode. No, it's not just in this episode. He's just a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> well, it's a it's a it's a new development or a new word development. I don't know. He's slowly been becoming a piece of shit. And now he has become it. He has. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon's evolution is the same as your Thanksgiving meal. Oh, um, gross. So, I guess he has left several bodies in the desert. Right? All the women. And Emily Valentine is like the the zombie. <laughs> it just keeps coming just, back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can't get her. Kelly should have shot her in the head. <laughs> right? Oh, the first yawn of 1997! <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I can't help it. That's okay. We have a carbon monoxide leak in, the, <laughs> in, the, in our apartment. Right. Here, so don't worry, everybody. Hey, I got up at 6.20 a.m. for work this morning. Nice. So I have a right for yawning. Yeah. We've got to work to pay for these apartments, even though we were youngins. Right. So, okay, this episode. Yeah. Started with Injustice for All. We literally just watched it, so if we can't remember anything, like that's a problem. Um Yeah. <laughs> that would be a you problem. Hey now. No, it started out with Steve. Okay. I think. Sure. Like yelling at a fucking like caterer dude. <laughs> that's what I remember first. <laughs> it starts out with Kelly in the hospital. Okay. We get the we get our our answer right away. Is Kelly dead? She is not. No. Instead, the makeup department has applied some. Yeah, somebody got extra pay this week. Yeah, so they applied some latex to her to her neck. Yeah, and that is considered how. So this is so funny. This I guess this is the difference between being a main cast member and being a not even a guest star, but just like a you know a. a extra for the week or whatever because they both both kelly and the lesbian girl whose name i can't remember right were in this fire they were both in the same place they were both in the bathroom they were both rescued at the same time kelly has a little bit of a burn on her neck that's going to be gone in a couple episodes and later in this episode we go see the list the lesbian woman, and she's completely covered in bandages. And yeah. It looks like a full body cast. Her face is completely obscured, and she's like, oh, God saved us. <laughs> she's like, I'm just happy to be alive. Right. She's like, we're alive. That's all that matters, right? Yeah, it's kind of messed up. Like, now, uh, can you hand me that steak? I got to drink it with a straw. I think uh, Kelly is maybe having a little survivor guilt there. Like, Not like the other girl didn't also survive, but... She's going to make it, like you said, out with minimal scarring, probably. Yeah. Where this girl... We're never... They're not going to pay a makeup person to do this. And uh, what's her name? Jenny Garth is not going to sit in a makeup chair for an extra 10 minutes every morning <laughs> to get this. Oh, that was text, more than 10 minutes, I bet. It wasn't that complex. Eh. I've never taken stage makeup but as a class, but... They did her hands, too. Oh, nice. So, I don't Speaking know. of doing hands, Emily's still in this episode. What the fuck? No, we don't have to go there. Why, 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 why Emily and hand stuff? Like, why does that happen in your brain? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't say it happened in my brain. I think it did, though. <laughs> Speaking of doing hands. <sighs> Speaking of doing uh, fucking bitches. 
Emily Valentine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, so Kelly, Kelly is like you said, she's she's a bad attitude. She does, but I don't. I don't. What did you expect? Remember, even up before she got burned, she was very negative, and now she's got something that bad that actually happened to her. It's she, not. <laughs> she is one of the most negative people right. on this show, and she can't. I don't even think she's looking at this other girl and feeling blessed that she's not her. No. So, she should be. Yeah, she should be blessed. God struck down the lesbian because <laughs> God hates homosexuals or whatever, I guess. The lesbian said, God put you in that fire and he took you out. Mm. Like, she is burned to hell. Yeah. Like, how does she feel about that? If that's her belief, like, God did this to me and he saved me, like, well, she, she's why? Just, she's just positive. I guess. And then later Kelly says that she's she wants to contemplate why if God like God lets us live on this earth but just causes pain all the time. And God it must be just shitty to be an attractive blonde rich woman. Right. I mean <laughs> she Beverly has Hills. had some bad things happen to her. Sure. But everybody has, has some she, bad things happen. Has she on. really though? Her mom's a drug addict. Yeah. And her dad's pretty much gone. Okay. I'll give you that. So, maybe not recently, but in her formative years, I think she had some bad shit happen to her. I'm not saying that being rich and pretty means that your life is is perfect, but, I mean, have a little perspective. Yeah. Well, I, I get what you're saying. You got dads ru- rushing their kids back to Mexico and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, in this episode. Oh, God. Yeah, there's a lot of some dark shit that happens in this episode. Oh, yeah. So... Okay, Jesse has his first court case, and she brought that up, mm-hmm. because he's, it's like an internship, I think, or something? Something like that. Yeah. It's he, gets to, he gets to work real cases for people who can't afford lawyers. It's basically like, hey, these people can't afford lawyers, so we're not going to give them a real lawyer, but we'll give them a law right. students. Like people who go you to- You know enough about the law. People who go to dental school for uh, their teeth cleanings, yeah. Like oh that. yeah, or uh, haircutting school or whatever they call it. What do they call that? I, I don't know. Beauty school. Yeah, beauty school dropout. Okay. I got my haircut at a beauty school once. Did you? Yeah. How'd it go? It was good. Cool. It was when my hair was really, really long, like basically shoulder length. Okay. And then I had them cut it off to like a normal length, and they were all like, "Oh wow!" <laughs> uh, and then the 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 teacher came over and she was like, "Oh, I love transformations like this." And she's she was like showing the girl how to cut the hair and everything. Mm-hmm. And she basically like took over. She's like, "Oh, your hair's so thick, and I love it." And like she just started uh, talking about how much she loved my hair. And then since <laughs> before we knew it, uh, she basically had done the entire job. So she uh, she wanted to uh, get to know you a little better there. I don't know about that. I think she just really liked my hair. Okay. Sure. You know she wanted you. No, I don't know that. Well, if she's like touching your head mm-hmm. and talking about how great your hair is. Which which head though? Oh my god, Mark. <laughs> anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what were we fucking talking Speaking about? Speaking of head, Emily Valentine's in this episode. <laughs> No, seriously, what were we talking about? We were talking about Jesse. Jesse. Okay, so Jesse is seeing this guy at his house or her apartment. I think it's an apartment they live in. I think they live in an apartment. And it's kind of weird to me that Andrea is part of this. Andrea brings... Andrea is like a deferential Japanese wife at first because she like walks in with a tray of things. She gets down on her knees and yeah, sets, just kneels down. sets it down. It's so weird. But then she turns on her Jewishness and starts <laughs> complaining. About starts the, yenting. Exactly. <laughs> well, okay, this dude's talking about, and I'm sorry, but this is bullshit. I call shenanigans here. It's Hanukkah, by the way, in this episode. Yeah. He's talking about how his children, uh, or he, he he's widowed, right? He's a widower, yes. Yeah. His wife is dead. And he has a factory job at night, and he has to have a babysitter, obviously, because he's a single dad. No. You got it wrong. He has a factory job during the day. 
But it was nice when this happened. Yeah, because he said he needed to go out for milk and diapers. The the kids were oh. out of, kids were out of milk and diapers, and he was running up to the grocery store. I thought he was talking about how he had to work because he has no milk or diapers, and I I misunderstood that part. No, he works during the day. I don't know what I don't know who takes care of the kids during the day, but he had to run out real quick for milk and diapers, and he asked a neighbor to come stay with the kids. He should have taken the kids with him, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but he didn't. And the neighbor just left them. Yeah, weird. Weird decision. Right. And there his four year old got out and was wandering the street with scissors? I guess like it's the evolution of this story is so weird. Yeah, I because... mean they're they're talking about it like we should already know what happened and they leave out a lot. Jesse's like because she's like, oh, you know, you, you had to leave or whatever. Uh, where he explains that, how he had to leave. And she's like, yeah, they'll understand that. That's that's nothing. It's totally normal. And Jesse's like, well, I don't know. You know, a four-year-old wandering uh, down the streets, uh, you know, in the middle of the night doesn't look good. And she's like, oh, it doesn't matter. And and every house has a pair of scissors. And she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> right? I expected Jesse to be like, yeah, but, you know, not every four-year-old stabs ten people. And it's like... <laughs> What the fuck? Like, it sounds like this kid went on a Ted Bundy spree or something. Yeah, they don't really explain. But, I mean, you know, even without the fucking scissors comment, like, four-year-old walking around by themselves at night, that's bad. Yeah. And the dad trusted somebody he shouldn't have. Apparently. The babysitter should be in trouble, too. I would imagine child abandonment. But, uh, I don't know. So, yeah, so Andrea gets her nose all in it. And he's like, would you be my lawyer? Mm -hmm. Which I think was a really shitty thing for her to do that, to put herself in the middle of Jesse's first case. It's his first case. Yeah, not cool. But. Well, you know, Andrea, not cool. Go ahead. And hit. <laughs> but later we, we find out when uh, Jesse's talking to Steve that this dude uh, loses his kids for three months. Like, like as though it's a punishment. That's not how this works, okay? It's like... We're taking them for three months. <laughs> and then you can have them back. But don't let it happen again, or next time we'll kill them. But no, like, usually the way it works is that they take them, and then they say, you've got to do some shit to get them back. Like, yeah. parenting classes, or like, if you're on drugs, you got to go to rehab, or like, whatever the problem is, you have to fix it, and then you get the kids back. Go beat the shit out of the neighbor. Right. <laughs> So, I mean, it probably would have been sufficient for him to show that he had a solid child care plan in place and maybe take a couple of parenting classes. Right. But instead, he freaks out and takes his children from the foster care home and Goes they back go to back Mex to Mexico. He's gone now. So. We'll never see him again. It's kind of a not great ending to the story. <laughs> um, so we had... That story with then we have Steve. Steve is freaking out. Another Mexican dude. <laughs> like there's a lot, of, a lot going What's on. What's going Mexican on with nine hundred two one zero? Too many Mexicans. No, Carol no. says <laughs> it's just weird. Um, Sorry, I won't tell. I won't tell them the uh, the racial slurs that you were <gasps> banding oh about my before God. we started Stop recording. It. <laughs> So, but he's yelling at their caterer who made like tacos and stuff for the party mm -hmm. because he asked to get paid. Now, you sounded like you're on Steve's side here because it was a little bit bad timing because it was like the morning after the fire. And it was, his, he was wearing a tuxedo that was still uh, blackened yeah. with <laughs> smoke. Uh, he's like, where's my money? And Steve's like, you need your money that bad? And he threw it at him. Yeah. He's like, I don't need it that bad. And he walks off. Then why were you bothering him, he said, though? take this and get some churros. <laughs> oh, he did not. But um, I, I still think the guy should have been able to fucking get paid if he was expecting to get paid. He's counting on that money for whatever. Yeah. He shouldn't get yelled at for asking for his money. I don't think he should get yelled at, but it is bad timing. I, I can see... I, I, I think Steve should pay him, but I can see why he kind of blew up at him a little bit well and you know in this episode there's kind of a timing is everything theme in there oh yeah yeah timing of when to get uh diapers and milk timing of <laughs> when to stick your nose in where it doesn't belong and uh when it comes to emily valentine oh you want to you want to go to emily valentine i do all right 
I mean, it's the heart of the matter here, isn't it? She, uh, okay, so Brandon is with Kelly, saying how much he loves Kelly. They're all sweet and wonderful together. This episode, and <laughs> before you finish this, this episode really pissed me off. Because we, I don't like that he gets away with this. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I mean, I think this is going to come back. I'm sure it will. But I, like I said, I don't, I don't like that he gets away with this. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, he's, he's talking about how much he loves Kelly and stuff. Yeah, they're all sweet and lovey-dovey and shit. And then later he is out at, what, Andrea's party, I think, or something? He goes, so, okay, there's two different parties. That, there's two different Hanukkah parties that happen in this episode. The first one is like a faculty Hanukkah party at the school. And they're like, um, uh... Brandon, uh, you know, it's so nice of you to come. Uh, anytime we get the president here for a uh, Hanukkah celebration, it's a mitzvah, you know. And and, uh, <laughs> and then he goes, this you call a suit? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> no, um, but he, yeah, so he goes to the faculty one first. That's where he's at at first. And I believe this is where he's uh, talking to Andrea and says he just has to stop somewhere before he goes back to Kelly. Yeah, she's like, oh, you're going to go see Kelly, your girlfriend that almost died in a fire <laughs> because you weren't there. And he said, uh, yeah, but first. So he's got to go get, you know, his dick sucked or whatever because he goes to see Emily, mm-hmm. who has not left. No, she's still in the Bellage Hotel. Where Dylan used to live. Yeah. So shout out to uh, years gone Shout by. out! 1994 right and um they're pretty fucking uh lovey-dovey yeah they're they're canoodling i would say he's looking at her all moony and i'm not i'm not liking it i'm not loving it and then he goes to kelly and it looks like that hair got even shorter yeah somehow it did (laughs) she looks so awful but he goes to uh to kelly Mm -hmm. and acts like nothing's happened but he talks to Emily, and she says, you know, timing's everything. Mm-hmm. This is the next time. He sees her multiple times during this episode. Yeah. And uh, he's, you know, talking about how he feels guilty. And she's like, oh, you feel guilty for not telling your girlfriend who had this horrible thing happen and, you know, is probably in lots of pain and stuff because, you know, you don't want to upset her. And she's like, yeah, I would not tell her. Right. <laughs> Which is smart. I agree. I guess. You don't? You think that he should have told her? I mean, I'd want to know. Well, yeah, everybody would want to know, but what's actually she... best for her in the situation? If he was thinking about what was best for her, his dick would be drier than it is right now. Yeah, it's so slimy that he's, like, seeing her and then being with Emily. But he he goes and sees her. He basically says he, he well, not basically, he flat out says he loves Emily. And she says that she still loves him, too. Mm-hmm. They kiss. This is the second time. This is after uh, Andrea's family Hanukkah party. And when he wins all the gold coins. And he even, he says if, if it were six months ago or six months in the future. Six different. months from now. Yeah. He's anticipating that things are not going to work out with him and Kelly. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, if, if the fire hadn't happened, I think he would have broken up with Kelly. I agree. So, so God put her in that fire so she'd still with be be with this fucking loser. But so yeah, they they make out and everything. They definitely had sex. Oh yeah, and they definitely had sex before, and they probably had sex every fucking day that she's been there because she's only going to be there for two weeks. And they're like, hey, let's get as much of this as we can. Mm-hmm. And then he just you know cleans up and goes and smiles at his girlfriend, cleans up. <laughs> <laughs> and tells her he loves her. Brandon, how come uh, every time you come and visit me, there's always a rag in your pocket? Um, for, for cleanup. Ew. So, you're the one that said it. Um, so, he goes and goes to, to what's her name? To Kelly. Mm-hmm. And says to her, hey, uh, I saw Val- Emily the other day. She, uh, you know, wishes you well. And she goes, oh, yeah, at the airport. And then he admits to her, no, she's still in town. Yeah, like, what the fuck, Brandon? But he doesn't go all the way with the truth. No. He only goes partway. He only tells her that he saw Emily, and she gets mad. Mm-hmm. 
Justifiably so. Right. And he leaves and he's, he's like, like, there's nothing to worry about. And she's like, who said I was worried? And he was like, oh, no, you just look worried. I mean, there's nothing to. And and she I think she picks up on on at least a little bit of something. She yeah. gets pissed off. And then he acts like she's being crazy or whatever. Yeah, He says, I'll call you later. And she's like, you don't have to call me. And then he's like, uh, you need to get some rest, Kelly. Yeah. Like, fuck you. That's like asking her if she's going to start her fucking period. Yep. <laughs> like, no, Brandon. Well, why don't you no. smile more, Kelly? Um, and so, yeah. Stop so. fucking other women. Maybe I'll smile. <laughs> God, he's a dick. So then someone else comes to see uh, uh, Kelly. Emily Valentine. Okay, I wasn't sure if we were going there yet. Yes. Yeah, she decides, because Brandon tells her that, like, that you know, Kelly's mad at him and stuff, so she decides to go smooth it out. Mm-hmm. And she lies and, and, you know, tells her that Brandon's just so in love with you, and yeah. I know you're upset, and I just didn't want you to think anything. Brandon said he loved you before the fire. Ugh. So now the episode ends with Kelly being like, oh, I love you, Brandon. And it's not how the episode I forgive ends, but... you. And with mm. them it is. Yeah. The two of them. Their story. The loom. Their story. That's how their storyline ends. Yes. And it just, it makes me sick. Like you said, he shouldn't get away with this. No. I, like, Kelly is not my favorite character in the world, but he's, she deserves much better than this. Yeah, for sure. I think she should go back to Steve this point yeah well you know what he loves her more steve we never finished steve's story by the way oh yeah sorry i got distracted steve uh so yeah steve's concerned about what's going on with kelly and steve what's her name valerie says to to steve hey you know i'll lie in court for you if you want yeah and he's like you know what i don't even fucking know about you yeah it's so weird like she's trying to be nice and helpful and he's acting like she's being a bitch because she offered to break the law for him but it's like that's her being nice yeah i think that he she's got a bingo card i believe with all the male uh, characters or all the the male people on the show on it and she's just checking it off (laughs) she's got dylan she's got steve she's gonna come for brandon david ray Ray. <laughs> uh, what's her name? Tori Spelling's girlfriend. Right. Boyfriend. She's going to whatever. She's going to save. Uh, she's going to save Jim Walsh for last. Oh, my God. God, I could see that, too. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, she Steve gets all pissed off at her. And then what else happens? Okay, I'm, I want to now. I want to talk about her, but I, I should need to finish talking about him. They go to court. Yeah, you just yeah. want to keep avoiding <laughs> Steve's storyline. <laughs> he find, he actually goes to court, and he is being encouraged to plead no contest to trespassing, or no, was it? I think it's disturbing, disturbing the, the peace. peace. Yeah. And then the and the his dad tells him that they will then give him a hundred hours of community service. Mm-hmm. And a thousand dollar fine or something. Yeah. And Griffin Griffin Stone, Casper Van Dien, his dad has arranged this whole thing. He's mm-hmm. paid for the lawyer. They've set up the deal. He paid off the victims, including mm-hmm. Kelly. Yeah, they've signed, you know, statements that they're okay with this and mm-hmm. stuff. So then he at the as they're giving the sentence out, the judge is like, now in their defense though. He acts like his dad tricked him by not telling him about the stipulation the judge throws on there. It seems like an afterthought. It does. I think that he was thinking that they were too relieved and he wanted to give them more punishment. That's what it looks like. It looks like if uh, you have a child and you give a child a punishment and they like they seem happy about it. They turn away. You're like, oh, fuck you. No way. Yeah. So then the judge is like, and for the next two years, you cannot have anything to do with any kind of event or party planning or raves Raves. or whatever you call it. So your newfangled words. (laughs) So he just shit all over Steve career idea. And Steve Steve is 
pissed. Yeah, but Steve can be in college for two years. And, right? And, and p- pick this back up. It's rid- I mean, he's way overreacting. I would still be grateful and happy. And he's like, he and his dad get in a big fight. And I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, his dad didn't really try to defend himself, so maybe he did know about it. Well, but... his, yeah, his, what his dad said, though, he's like, you know what, Steve, I heard all about how uh, you and Griffin fucking lifted this key. Because mm-hmm. earlier they talk about trespassing, and I, and I even said when we're watching the episode, I'm like, why trespassing? Didn't they rent that house? That's what they said in right. the episode. Um, but his dad says it, it gets explained. It's not a it's not a continuity error. Yeah. His dad says, "Oh yeah, I heard all about how you and Griffin lifted that key from that real estate office for the the house. And if I know you, it was your idea." He basically thinks his son's still a piece of shit, like yeah. he was back in high school when he's no longer that way anymore. Yeah, like because he stole the test scores or whatever way back in the day. It's like now he'll he never trust him about key anything and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. But so he's like, what are you talking about? The only reason I, I cut Griffin in on the deal is because of uh, that he had this house. Yeah, that he rented the house, mm-hmm. but he didn't. No, nope, he fucking lied. It was and, an abandoned house. And so Steve, Steve basically assaults him in his room. Yeah. He's like, you're moving out. Your five week contract's up, Casper Van Dien. <laughs> He's like, there's a two year wait list for this room. I'm not going anywhere. You're getting the fuck out of here. Yeah. He uh he just shoves him up against the wall and like, yeah, he's really like mean and bullying. And um I'm sorry, but I, I don't like this dude, but I think that Steve was a little bit of a dick to him. I mean I guess. I can understand him being upset about the key thing. But, like, to threaten physical harm and make him give up his place to live seems like a bit of an overreaction. Well, he feels that he's responsible not only for him losing the ability to do parties for two years, but also that he's the one that put everyone at risk because of the electrical system of the house and what he was doing and everything with the electrical system of the house. And the fact that Kelly got hurt and everything. He's got a lot of guilt over everything that happens. I think he's placing that a lot on Griffin Stone. He says that uh, Muntz, I think is his name, the redheaded dude that it's the fat guy. hangs out with them. Yeah. He says that, you know, he's willing to testify that you put, you know, the wrong kind of fuses in the. And whatever. Valerie's willing to testify that you shot JFK. Right. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, maybe it is his fault. I don't know. But he's moving out, so yeah. good he, good for Steve, I guess. He's doing a Billy Joel, and he's moving out. <laughs> I'm moving out. And then throughout the episode, uh, Dylan mm-hmm. has, you know, come up a few times oh, yeah. because Kelly calls him while he's still in rehab when she's all upset about uh, Valerie. Right. Yeah, Brandon. Not Valerie. <laughs> Emily, Emily Valentine. Valentine. <laughs> and then while she's talking to him, Brandon shows up to talk to him. Uh-huh. So what do you think that's about? I don't know, because he says, she says, don't tell him or whatever. And she doesn't allude to what it is. I assume just them talking to mm-hmm. each other. And he says, look, you know, I'm not going to keep secrets anymore. That's what got me in here. If I'm going to, if he brings it up, I'm going to talk to him about it or whatever. And so they talk to each other, and he's like, yeah, you know, she was all upset about that Emily Valentine shit. And he's like, oh, she told you about that. <laughs> and and by the way, what he brings up doesn't seem like something he shouldn't say. No. He was just like, yeah, I've talked to her. And it's like, why wouldn't they talk? They're friends still. And she was in a bad a bad accident and, and you know, had to go to the hospital. It makes sense they'd talk. Maybe she has a little bit of guilt because she has feelings for Dylan and she's talking bad stuff about her relationship to the guy she has feelings for. Maybe, I don't know. Even though it doesn't seem suspect because of the context. But. Right. But anyway, so he says, yeah, you know, she, she mentioned it and everything and he's like, oh, well, nothing's going on. Yeah. And Dylan's like, mm, I don't know, buddy. Yeah, he's like, give my regards to Emily. And he's like, why would you think I see her? I'm going to see her? I fucking seen her. I mean, what are you talking about? She's long gone. Yeah, Dylan just like is like, he knows. Oh, of course he knows. And if Kelly wasn't so stupid, she'd know. 
But she believed Emily, so fuck it. And so he's like, you know, you gotta you gotta make things right or whatever. Nothing much comes from that conversation. No. Um just kind of seeing how he's in the middle between the two of them, which is weird. But he's checking out. Yes. That's the the headline for Dylan is that he's checking out of rehab. He is once again I guess he finished filming eight seconds or whatever that fucking <laughs> movie he was in was. Right. And now he's coming back to the main cast. So then when he goes home, Valerie and Cindy Walsh are in his house waiting for him with a cake. Yeah. They, it's weird. Valerie busts out of the cake. <laughs> it's so weird because he calls Valerie babe. Yeah. She's like, she, she was all about Steve, but Steve kind of rejected her. So now she's back to Dylan. Yeah. Until, like I said, she moves on to David or 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 Ray or whoever else. We didn't talk about Ray either, by the way. Oh, yeah. Donna and Ray have a storyline here, too. Don, Ray's pissed off and Donna, Donna's, they're doing the Christmas tree farm thing. Yeah. Because Halloween's over. Yeah. Where the pumpkins were, there are now trees. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pumpkins begat trees. And I don't know how that shit works. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they did. And anyway, so um, he's all pissed off the entire time. And his uncle's like, says to Donna, well, if you knew his mom, you'd know why he's pissed off. And so he just like, Ray just comes out and says, yeah, my mom's an alcoholic who doesn't drink 11 months out of the year. But in December, she falls off the wagon and drinks and makes an embarrassment out of herself. He shows up here, and he says it's because my dad left her 20 years ago in December, shoved her down the stairs. And she lost, she lost a, a baby. baby. It's like all this horrific shit happened to her. And he's pissed off because for one month out of the year she drinks, when the other 11 months she's completely sober. That seems, I don't know, very, like judgmental and very low tolerance on his part. I guess, but I mean, she's his mom and he's been dealing with this his whole life. So there's probably a lot. It's, I mean, like it's one thing to look at him as an adult now Mm. and be like, whatever, suck it up. But if he was like, you know, a 10 year old kid and his mom's drunk all the time in December, there's going to be a lot of hurt and upset there. It would be like the, the movie. I accuse my parents. (laughs) When the drunk mom comes into the party and uh, everyone's laughing. She's drunk. I don't know this movie. It's funny. That's uh, it's a mystery science theater. Ah, uh, well, that explains it. <laughs> uh, I accuse my parents. Okay. Um, check it out, anybody, if you can find it. Anyway, so then Dylan comes home. We're back to Dylan's party now. And should anybody have whiplash from this episode? <laughs> um and we just recorded. We're usually so much more together when we just record or we just watched it. <laughs> oh my god. god! You are very I'm just tired. Why don't you check your blood sugar? <laughs> Maybe I fuck? need to. What the fuck? Okay. So anyway, um, he gets a bunch of Valerie's. Like I separated all your mail because I know that'll be a plot point. Oh yeah. And she's like, "Here's all the personal stuff. This is this is where it is." And he goes through, and he's like, "Michigan." Who do I know in Michigan? And I thought I was like, he got our letters. <laughs> what's what's retro? <laughs> right. What's the nine zero two one zero show <laughs> from Massive Late Fee? And uh, so he opens it up, and it's some business asshole who's like, yeah, uh, like eleven months ago, I found <laughs> I was uh, on a business trip, and I found this note. And just now, I didn't call the police or. <laughs> Right, it's so weird. Reported or anything. It didn't have your address on it. Just said Dylan. So I looked at every Dylan in the world, and uh, I finally found you. It must have had his address or his phone number or something. I don't know. All it says is there's a little note. He's like, I found this in the stall where she left it, and it's the note from his little sister, Erica, uh, that says... um, I looked in the Ark of the Covenant, Dylan, and, <laughs> and it says, 
whatever. Uh, they're they're taking me to Brazil. Help me. So, yeah, help me. Yeah, why would you not take that note to the police? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, you found that note and you were just like, oh, I think I'll just put this in my wallet and, and then go through airport security. Right. Like, what if he got frisked? <laughs> What's this note, sir? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So then uh, he just kept it for several months and decided to mail it now. It's like, hey, I thought maybe you, you, you needed this. Is she dead? <laughs> I mean, maybe in their defense, maybe it came a couple months ago while he was in rehab. But still. Maybe. I don't know, but it's been, it's been a while. Yeah, it, it should definitely have been given to him sooner. But that's where the episode ends. So I assume next episode, he and Jim... Rambo style. <laughs> Do you think Jim's going to Brazil with him? I don't think so. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't. You he's, really? Do you really? He's going to be his guy in the computer, right? So Jim will be sitting in the computer and be like, uh, there are 12 clicks from you, Dylan. Because I would be willing to bet on this. No, I'm not betting on this. Damn it. It's a joke. Damn it. I want my massage. It's a bit. <laughs> Sorry that you always lose. I too. It's not fair. Oh, yep. So we'll see what happens with Brazil next week. Yep. I hope. Or, that, well, yeah. I don't you know, know, in two or three weeks, whenever they decide to talk about it again. I hope that something happens. Right. I want those two. I want those actors to come back. I want that little girl to come back. Yeah, we need someone to make fun of on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I want Dylan the Muddy to come back. That makes that makes his character so much better. <laughs> Sound like Valerie right now, <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, that uh, that is the episode for the week. First week we're back, and this is the first show we were doing of 1997. Happy uh, 1997! All right. Well, t- Carol, tell tell them tell them what they can um, do in this new year to so help us out. Check out our website. Yep. At RetroLateFee.com. Mm-hmm. Write us at uh, LateFee1994 at AOL.com. Yeah, you got it. It's only the like 700th <laughs> time you've said it. <laughs> and share your tapes with your friends. Yeah. We'll, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>